Welcome to the next episode 5.3 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. In this episode, called Optimization of Vectorization Data Structures, we are starting to discuss the optimization of vector arithmetics in applications for Intel Xeon processors and Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors. This discussion consists of four episodes, each of which talks about different aspects of vectorization. And I would like to remind you that in case you have any questions related to the topic of current video episode or any other episodes, meaning related to the topics of parallel programming and optimization, please feel free to leave your question in the comment section below the video. It is our goal to help all our students to learn this material quickly and painlessly. Thank you and good luck! First, let's talk about one of the most important aspects of vectorization, unistride access to memory. Before we can perform addition, multiplication, transcendental functions or any other operations on a vector of values, the processor must load those values from the main memory or from a cache into a vector register. After the vector operation, we may need to store the values back into the memory. Memory access may actually take longer than the arithmetic operation, so it is important to optimize it. Processors access memory one cache line at a time. So, if our data is scattered in memory, we will have to access multiple cache lines to load one vector. But if our data is contiguous in memory, we will do only one memory access to load or store a vector. Let's see how it may look in code. Suppose we are writing an application that deals with particles. For instance, we have a set of point particles in space, each particle has coordinates x, y, z and charge q. And our task is to compute the electric potential produced by those particles at one or many points identified by vector capital R. This can be done using Coulomb's law and superposition principle. The calculation of Coulomb's law is compute-intensive, with lots of additions, multiplications and a square root function. It looks like a vectorizable calculation too, because we can process different particles in different vector lanes. So, we should expect that Intel Xeon Phi coprocessors can perform well for this task. To express this procedure in code, it may appear natural to declare a structure that contains particle coordinates x, y, z and charge q, and then to declare an array of those structures. This will definitely work. Then we have to write a loop that expresses the superposition principle and applies Coulomb law. It will look like this. The Intel compiler will vectorize this loop, so we may think that the job is done. However, let's see what will happen during vector calculations. The compiler will take 16 iterations in i, load 16 values of x in a vector register, populate another vector with values of capital Rx, and then do subtraction. Similarly, for y and z and for the square root. The issue is the loading of values of x, y, z and q into a vector. We can see from the code that they are not contiguous in memory. The value of x for charge with index 0 is 4 values away from x for charge number 1 and so on. Instead of this array of structures, we can design the code differently. We can declare one array for all coordinates x, another array for y, and so on. For convenience, we can put those arrays into a structure. So now instead of array of structures, AOS, we have a structure of arrays, SOA. The advantage of this approach is that now when we write the loop, we access consecutive values of x for contiguous values of i, the same for y, z, and q. Of course, the SOA approach may be a deviation from object-oriented programming. However, if we are talking about performance, it is far superior to the AOS approach. This diagram shows the performance of our application in gigaflops per second. Higher is better. To convert from time into gigaflops per second, we assumed that each iteration of the loop is 10 floating-point operations. The benchmark is with thread parallelism. Different cores are computing results for different values of capital R. But what is important to us is what happens inside of every core at the level of vector units. The first set of bars is the baseline performance with an array of structures. The second set of bars is the optimized performance after changing the data layout to a structure of arrays. 
This resulted in a factor of 2 boost on the CPU and 2.5 on the Xeon FICO processor. In fact, if we further relax the floating point precision requirement and use the argument of P domain exclusion 8, the Xeon 5 performance improves further to 700 gigaflops per second. Conversion of data structures to such a layout that vector operations can use Unistride loads and stores is always a very important step in performance optimization. As we can see, the performance improvement can easily be more than a factor of 2. At the same time, this is often the most difficult optimization to implement in an already existing application, because the syntax of data accesses has to be rewritten in the entire code. For new applications, it makes sense to think carefully about the data layout before starting to develop the code. Contiguous access to memory, or in other words, unistride access to data in vector operations, is the rule of thumb for high-performance computing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you in the next episode.